In this video, I got another mini comic book haul I wanna share with you guys, but more importantly, I'm gonna talk about another underrated series. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you a little comic book haul I have, but more importantly, talk about another underrated series. Now, I did a video a couple weeks back that talked about Tales to Astonish as being a series that I felt was truly undervalued. And in this video, I kinda of wanna dig into another series that I think is really interesting and that I've personally had my eye on uh, for all of the key books within it because I think that there is a lot of opportunity for these books to get hot. Uh, as it relates to the MCU. But before I get into the series and my comic books, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying my content, love interacting with you guys, let's keep this conversation going, do one of those things, help support the channel, and I would appreciate it. All right, with that said, uh, let's go into the books that I got for, with you to show you guys today. Uh, as you know, I am in Vancouver and on my way up to Vancouver, uh, you know, I got those Marvel trading cards that I opened the other day. Uh, well, I also got some comic books in uh, one of the LCSs I went to and I wanna share with you guys some of the ones I picked up. I think they're really, really cool. Uh, I only have a few, but I think, uh, you know, the ones I got, I, I'm, I'm really excited about. So uh, the very first one I'm gonna share with you here today is actually uh, in that underrated series I talked about in the other week's video, which is a Tales to Astonish book number 48, first appearance of a character known as Porcupine. And what what, what is it with me and B-tier villains? I don't know. I just love these old, uh, you know, campy, uh, just just villainous characters from the Silver Age. And, and this is one that I've always sort of had my eye on, which was the Porcupine book. And I saw it in the LCS. It was being sold at $75. That's what I got this at. So um, I would actually say that typically speaking, I usually only buy stuff that I think I can find uh, in an LCS that I think is cheaper than an eBay price I would pay for. Uh, this was probably a little bit more expensive, although this is typically a higher grade than I normally get. I think this was listed at like a 5.5 or a six or so. Um, so I spent, you know, 75 bucks for it. Pretty good, support support the LCS. Um, and, you know, when I when I saw this one in, in person, I really loved it. I love the colors with this. I love this sort of like sunset um, color right here. Really like in person, when you see this comic book, it's it's a lot more striking uh, than, than you would think when you see pictures on, online. But uh, Porcupine is a really interesting character. And, and like I said, you know, there's been a, a lot of, uh, I've had a lot of personal speculation that Ant-Man and the Wasp are going to continue to play a major role in the MCU. And so I've had my eye on the Tales to Astonish series in general. And, you know, for that reason, uh, I'm interested in, in a lot of these books. So uh, this was one I felt like, you know, I would pick up. I don't think that I'm going to See, we're going to see Porcupine necessarily in the MCU, uh, but just a fun sort of Silver Age book to have. So Tales to Astonish, 48, uh, great, great pickup. All right, the next one I have here is another underrated book. Like truly, I feel like this is so underrated, but at the same time, I'm not really going to dig into the series yet. And that is actually going to be, uh, I managed to get my hands on a copy of Eternals number one. That's right. Eternals number one, first appearance of Icarus, first appearance of the Eternals. We know that we're getting Eternals later on this year in a movie. And for that reason, this is why I'm calling these Eternals books massively underrated. I mean, I got this book for $70. That, that's what I picked it up for. So let, let's just put that into perspective for a second. You mean to tell me that the White Vision book right now, Avengers, uh, West Coast Avengers number 45, is on average $25 more than this book right here when we know that Eternals number one, their true first appearance, and is going to have a movie later this year, uh, you can get this book for, for cheaper than that one. Uh, that's crazy to me. I mean, I think that these Eternals books right now are so underrated. Um, and what we're seeing, you know, as we look into the numbers and the prices with you guys, like once these shows come out, once the trailers are there, once the movies are out, uh, you know, the, the books just take a massive jump in price. So this is one that I picked up knowing that it was a good deal because uh, for 70, 70 bucks, this was a lot cheaper than I could think I, I think I could find on eBay. So I definitely had to pull the trigger on it. It's about a seven. That's what they graded it as. So, you know, not the best grade, but still no low mid grade, whatever you call it, consider a seven is better than no grade, right? Um, but I wanted to get my hands on this book because I just know, like later on in this year, when we get the Eternals movie, this thing is going to double, maybe triple. Like, I mean, if we're looking at the, you know, the the WandaVision books and how they've performed, and now we're heading into Falcon and Winter Soldier, and, you know, I'll probably do a video uh, later this week, you know, just sort of taking a pulse on the current market with those books. Uh, we know that when the show's out, like those books are going to go, you know, 
astronomic, you know, so similar with the Eternal series here, a lot of these books, like we know these characters are coming. Now I've talked about Eternals number three, first appearance of Cersei. I think Eternals number two is also a really, really great book because it has, you know, the first appearance of the Celestials. And, I, and we, we've we already been given the information that the Celestials are going to play a big role in the Eternals movie. So these books, I still feel like are undervalued, even though we know that these movies are coming later on in the year. So anyways, Eternals number one, had to pick it up. All right, let's go on now to this next book that I got here. And this is going to be, you know, uh, what I want to talk about generally in this uh video with you guys here today and, and the underrated series, or at least what I feel like is an underrated series. And I managed to get my hands on a giant size Defenders number three. I got it for $40. So uh, really, really excited about that pickup. Uh, I did a video yesterday that was analyzing, you know, Go Collect's hottest comics of the week. And this was one that popped up in it. And the reason it popped up, in case you didn't see that video, is that there was a MCU sort of news source uh, a blog, I believe it is, that uh, came out with the, uh, apparently it's rumored that in Captain Marvel 2, Michael Korvac, who has his first appearance in this book, is going to be one of the villains of Captain Marvel 2. So for that reason, this book, you know, overnight, what you know was crazy uh, purchased on eBay. Uh, I think there were like hundred a hundred copies that sold instantaneously. That you know that type of thing. And uh, th this has always been a kind of a popular spec book. Uh, but for that reason, you know, it took another not uh, another jump up into the spec market. And uh, overall, you know, th this is a first appearance of a, of a villain character known as Michael Korvac. Super powerful. Relates to the Kree. Relates to the Scroll. Uh, had his first appearance in Giant Size Defender number three. And that's why I kind of wanted to talk about sort of the Defenders type as a whole you know granted this is the giant size defenders run but there are like you know an actual defenders uh, regular issue run that I think for a long time has been really really underrated and what, what I like about the Defenders and as it relates to the MCU, I mean, we're already sort of getting murmurs that, you know, they may pop up in the MCU or, or, or certain characters within their, you know, book run have, have significance as it relates to the MCU. What I like about the Defenders is because it's a Doctor Strange led team. You know, think if you, if you don't know who, who the Defenders are, think of it like uh, it's the Avengers, except it's led by Doctor Strange. And instead of them sort of battling, you know, what they what you would normally fight on say earth or whatever you know the avengers would have to rise to the challenges that come to earth the defenders they they basically team up with dr strange and fight those sort of like cosmic or interdimensional threats so that's what the defenders team does and they were a team of dr strange incredible hulk uh namor and the submariner or uh, sorry namor the submariner and the silver surfer so th that was the original team and so for that reason I, I think that you know if you look at the the land the landscape with the mcu currently you have dr strange he seems to be one of the figureheads of the mcu now that iron man and captain america are sort of on the shelf for a time and Additionally, you have the Incredible Hulk already on the table. He seems like he's going to continue to play the role. And then it's been massively speculated for a long time that Namor and the Silver Surfer will eventually show up. So to me, that's really interesting that Kevin Feige is presumably going to have these four characters who were on this Defenders team as tools that he can use in the MCU. And that makes me think, you know, if we're going to like put Iron Man and Captain America on the shelf for, for a time and not really do quote unquote Avengers movies for a little while, maybe the Defenders team has to sort of step in and you know be kind of the face uh, of the MCU as far as the team is concerned for at least for a time. So that is something that really, really excites me, especially since it seems like with you know Marvel's uh, inevitable like power creep that they have to continue to do where they're bringing these sort of like, you know, WandaVision interdimensional threats and and they're really just leveling as far as like, you know, the the scope as far as the villains are concerned if they bring in like a Michael Korvac for instance, well, they're going to need a team that can you know rise to that level. You know, it's like as as amazing as Captain America is, you know, he he can't go toe to toe with Mephisto for instance. You know, you need someone like a Silver Surfer or, you know, someone on that sort of power Power level to be able to battle those types of villains. So the Defenders team works perfectly for that. And so I, I just kind of want to show you guys like this, this run in general, show you guys some books that I think are interesting and just, to, you know, talk about the series as a whole, because I, I think it's massively underrated. And if we look at those West Coast Avengers books, as they relate to WandaVision, you know, like you see how many keys kind of emerge from that series. Whereas like you, you run, run the clock back like a year ago, nobody cared about those books. I feel like the Defenders books, um, 
you know, kind of have that same upside, so to speak, where, you know, nobody really, quote unquote, cares about them. I mean, granted, I think that there is a market and because they're more of a bronze bronze age run, they're going to have a little bit more value than a West Coast Avengers run. But for the most part, you know, as far as the, you know, the zeitgeist is thinking about them, uh, not, the comic book collecting community is not as concerned with a Defenders book right now. But I think that there's a lot of upside for it if we do see them in the MCU. So let's just kind of, kind of dig in here. I just want to show you guys a couple of the books that I think are really interesting. Of course, this is Marvel Feature 1, uh, The Defenders. This is considered the first appearance of the Defenders team. You see there that they started off Doctor Strange, Incredible Hulk, and Namor. And this is a great story. Like Doctor Strange had to go up against this uh, wizard. He was a threat. I can't remember exactly what the story was. Uh, it's a book I own. I've, it's been a while since I've read it. But he assembled you know, Namor and Hulk. Hulk to help him uh, fight fight this this threat. So that's kind of what the defenders always are. Is, is Doctor Strange kind of rallying the troops? You know, quote unquote, defenders assemble in in that sort of way. And he always ropes these guys into help, helping him uh, fight. You know, super super powerful threats. Uh, there was a Submariner book. I can't remember the number that had like quote the what is considered the prototype of the defenders. So that might be kind of a cool book. Um, but you know, for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about the defenders one. So Marvel feature one, very 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 cool book. Uh, here is Defenders number one. This is the the first book of their ongoing series. So this is one that's uh, you know also a really really cool book to own. Uh, and this was actually before they got Silver Surfer on the team. I think it's the next issue, number two, that Silver Surfer joins the team officially, and they would become like the mainstay for the you know the next uh, handful of issues. Uh, then there, here's some other cool ones. Defenders number four, I think that this is a really, really underrated book because this is what I believe is the first appearance of Valkyrie, uh, at least the, uh, the current rendition of Valkyrie that I believe uh, we have in the MCU. Uh, her, her name escapes me, the actress who, who plays Valkyrie. She made her appearance in Thor Ragnarok. But in this book, I think this is Valkyrie's first appearance. So for that reason, I feel like this is a book that, you know, feels like it has a lot of room to still grow because it feels like the Valkyrie we have in the MCU is going to continue to play a role. And that's another character too that they have. Like, you know, they don't even need to get Silver Surfer and uh, Namor on the table. They could do a team of Doctor Strange and Valkyrie and Thor and the Incredible Hulk and they can call it the Defenders team. So this is another book that I think is really, really great and under undervalued. Uh, here, Defenders number eight. This was the start of the Avengers Defenders War. Uh, I referenced this in my uh, video just the other day where we I talked about uh, the Defenders versus the Avengers. It was in the Loki video. Uh, so this is a really, really cool one and definitely a, 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 a an event film that they could build up to if they did Avengers versus Defenders. Uh, some other stuff here. This is the Defenders Avengers War. This is just a classic cover. I mean, I love this thing. Incredible Hulk versus Thor. I, I mean, just a just an incredible image right there. I, I absolutely love this cover. Uh, some other books here. Yeah, so the Defenders would go on to fight the Squadron Sinister. I think Nighthawk, who is like the Marvel version of, of Batman, uh, he would actually join the Defenders team. So, so the Defenders kind of became like an Avengers team where there would be, you know, uh, roster... Uh, a cycle, a cycling of a roster where new people would join the team and, and people would come in and out. Uh, here you have, I talk about this book all the time. This is the first appearance of the Wrecking Crew. They're like that, you know, super, super B villain team. I still think it's possible we could see the Wrecking Crew or at least the Wrecker in uh, the MCU in some kind of way. I think that that would be cool, but they make their first appearance in Defenders 18 here. First full appearance. It's a, it's a cameo versus full appearance thing. Uh, here's Defenders 28. Also another, what I feel like is an underrated book. This is the first appearance of a character known as Starhawk. And Starhawk is the character that Sylvester Stallone was playing in Guardians of the Galax Galaxy 2. So for a book that actually has a character, like who is legit in the MCU, I see this book being sold at really, really good deals. And if, if Sylvester Stallone uh, ends up becoming a bigger role in the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 movie and maybe plays just a bigger role at large in the MCU, I think that there, there's no reason that this book can't, you know, uh, double or triple in value, uh, especially as more people become aware of it. Or if uh, Sylvester Stallone ever dons a costume that is somewhat similar to the one that we see here in the Starhawk um, first appearance. Uh, additionally, this is a book that heated up because of WandaVision, Defenders 112. There was a first appearance of a, uh, I believe this is Agatha Harkness's son or daughter, I believe it was. So this is an interesting book. You know, it just kind of goes to show that there are so many, uh, you know, many first appearances of, of wizards and powerful beings and, e and evil people that Doctor Strange goes against. So if Doctor Strange is going to be like, you know, a, a figurehead of some manner in the MCU, there's so many storylines that, that they can pull from in this Defenders run. 
And then lastly, I've talked about this book before. This is Defenders 143. This is when Moon Dragon and Beast and Iceman and Angel became like the Defenders team. But this is the first appearance of a character known as the Runner. And this is a book that I think is super interesting. For those who don't know, the Runner was actually a cosmic elder who held one of the Infinity Stones that Thanos uh, actually picked up. And he held one of the Infinity Stones that Thanos got on his Thanos quest. So this is a really, really cool one. First appearance of the Runner. And this is one that I see for like two, three dollars. So I, I think this is a super affordable and undervalued book. Anyways, those are those are all the books that I have, you know, to show you today with my uh, mini comic book haul. And I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about the Defenders uh, title at, in general because I think it's super, super undervalued and underrated and could have a lot of sleeper books. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Uh, let me know, do you guys have any Defenders books? Uh, what do you think about the books I picked up? Uh, what do you guys think about Eternals? I think that those ones are super, super undervalued. Uh, drop me a like, comment, or subscribe if you're enjoying my content, and I will see you in the next video.